Hi, my name is Lori Rosenwald and I'm a talking mime. I'm not a very good mime, so I use the power of the English language to express my thoughts and feelings. For example, right now I'm stuck in a box and I can't get out. I'm going to have to do the whole show from inside this box. I want to talk about people that do lots of different kinds of things, but only if all the people are me. Top floor, ego department, please, just this once. Anyway, I'm 54 and I still haven't picked a major. I tried comedy, but it didn't work out. Not just because it's a disreputable, cheesy, idiotic frat boy art form, but because I'm a professional illustrator. But that's just as idiotic, because nobody's taken that seriously since 1839 when Louis Daguerre patented the camera. Doing comedy is like being a prostitute, without the sex or the money. And being an illustrator is like prostitution without the sex, the money, or the respect. So no, I'm not a comedian, and I'm certainly no actress. Although I have auditioned for the part of a mental patient, two homeless murderers, a Russian bikini waxer described as road hard and put away wet, and a butcher woman holding a meat puppet. You heard me. And yet, I had a speaking role on The Sopranos. I appeared in the part of woman, a role I feel I was born to play. I had one line. When you say that, you make me feel less than. I met somebody at a cocktail party, and afterwards she says, call me. And I say, sure, I'll call you. Let's be friends. And she says, no, 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 it's about work. And I say, oh, where do you work? And she says, Wilhelmina. And I say, are you by any chance blind? Because it's a big modeling agency, and I'm not exactly Victoria's secret weapon. And then I say, but I'm an illustrator. And she says, just send me a headshot. And I got the part. I hold an incredibly successful workshop called How to Make Mistakes on Purpose, which teaches people how to make mistakes on purpose. It's not what you think it is. It's not about accepting your mistakes and all that stuff. It's not good to describe it because it's about surprise. I make all the participants swear omerta, which is the mafia code of silence after they've done it. I've taught this workshop all over the world for Starbucks and Google and to the Prince of Sweden. It's not particularly for designers. Anybody can do it. There's some details at rosenworld.com, but not many. I think it's, uh, I've seen it before, but this time I think it's even better. You should be able to do something this creative, this, they, they speak about having loosened up and, uh, mm -hmm. and never having done anything like this, which is, it's so simple, but it's so good. And I think a couple of them said, whenever I'm stuck, I will always remember this is the way to do it. If you're seeing these movies with people drawing, please don't tell anybody that this is part of the workshop because these days even illustrators are afraid of drawing, let alone regular people. So please keep it a secret. This is a guidebook and a journal and a sketchbook called New York Notebook. And it's very arty and collage but it has great ideas like how to sneak into a Broadway show for free and buy designer shoes, and a mini modernism tour, and where to get ostrich meat, and how to make an egg cream, and where to go if you want to be a comedian, and Eisenberg's, which if it goes out of business, I'm out of here, and where to see great movies, and get your jumpsuit dry clean, and you can call up the New York Public Library, and they'll just tell you anything that you want to know, and strange places with no signs, and Chandrika soap, and Cafe Gitan, and the true mirror, where you see yourself the way other people see you, and a Yiddish vocabulary, and it's got everything really you need to know. New York Notebook. This is my book. It's called And to Name But Just a Few, Red, Yellow, Green, Blue. And this is the cover. And it's all about colors. And it's very collage-y. Anywhere you want to go, Ghana, France, Japan, Peru, bring some paper, paint, and glue. Anything you want to make, just be sure you always take red, yellow, green, blue. Yoshi, Pedro, Sven, and Sue. Bring some colored pencils, too. And then it says, 10 cents a peak. Oop. I am taking a nap under this flap and a blanket I made from a piece of gift wrap. Ketchup on your fries, cherries in your pies, planet Mars in space, lipstick on your face. Lobsters for your lunch, roses in a bunch. Stop, was that a sign? Call on the hotline, fire truck ahead, 
All of them are red. Jeans are blue, blue jays are too. Mailboxes to send your mail and a shark who has a tail. The sky is blue, the ocean's blue. And if you're sad, you could be blue. So I think you get the idea. And it's a very good book for kids. My latest book is called All the Wrong People Have Self-Esteem, an inappropriate book for young ladies, or frankly, anybody else. And it got a starred review from Publishers Weekly. Apparently, that's a big deal. And it has things like Kicked Out of Yoga, Your Breasts, What Do They Mean?, The PMS Collection Agency, Is the Earth Really Worth Saving?, Tired of Green?, Try the Purple Movement. If you've ever felt that you don't deserve bottled water, this book is for you. If you're a vegetarian but you eat meat, this book is for you. If you've ever stolen a lipstick, this book is for you. On the other hand, if you haven't or you don't, and everything's perfect, you should read it anyway because nobody likes a winner. Oh, they're so beautiful. And to think, no two are alike. Yeah, but they're pretty damn similar. Some people think I'm a pervert just because I like to watch couples, like in restaurants and stuff. For instance, last night I'm at Megu, and this man and woman are on a date. And the woman says, you are going to love this place. It is incredible. And oh my God, the sushi here is awesome. But you have to try the yellowtail. It is amazing, amazing. And I'm thinking this woman has just used up all of her superlatives. Because if it were me, I would wait until that piece of yellowtail jumped up, ran out onto West Broadway, hailed a piece of flying fish row, flew to the Middle East, created a lasting piece, flew back, turned into Johnny Depp, stepped over the bodies of Angelina Jolie, Scarlett Johansson, and Vanessa Paradis, pulled the Hope Diamond out of his pocket, popped open a magnum of Chateau d'Ichem 1929, got down on one knee and said, Laurie, will you be my bride? And then, and only then, would I say, you know what, that yellow tail is amazing. So I went to the shrink and complained I wasn't successful. So she says, why don't you concentrate on one career, focus on just being a writer or being a painter? So I fired the shrink. You know, they say it ain't over till it's over. But sometimes I think they say it's over, but really it's still going on. But this time it's over, for real. I just can't get out of this box.